In this lesson, I will talk about muscle spindles. The muscle spindles are sensory receptors in the muscle. So I'm going to draw a structure inside of muscle. This structure is enclosed with a connective tissue capsule. Now outside of this connective tissue capsule, there are extrafusal muscle fibers. Those muscle fibers are the muscle fibers that make the muscle contract. And between these, extrafusal muscle fibers, you can find the connective tissue capsule that encloses the receptor called the muscle spindle. What is characteristic of these extrafusal muscle fibers is that they have an origin on one side and they insert, on, for example, on the other bone on the other side. But there is something very interesting here and that is what we find in a connective tissue capsule. It's the intrafusal muscle fibers. Those are the intrafusal muscle fibers. The intrafusal muscle fibers are parallel to the extrafusal muscle fibers, but they do not attach to the tendon and they don't have the same origin as the extrafusal muscle fibers do. <clears throat> they are attached to the intramuscular connective tissue. So they do not go all the way to the tendon and they do not come from the origin, but they are actually simply attached to the connective tissue inside of muscle. Now, not all intrafusal muscle fibers are the same. I will talk about two types of intrafusal muscle fibers. The first two I have drawn here are the nuclear bag fibers. They have that name because they look pretty much like a bag in the center of the fiber. And inside of that so-called bag, there are nuclei of the muscle. The second type of intrafusal muscle fibers is the nuclear chain fibers. They are called like that because the order of nuclei is similar to chain. Now, because this is the receptor, we need to know how is the signal created and transported. There are primary spiral neuron endings that wrap around the intrafusal muscle fibers. Those are the neuron endings that are stimulated by the scratch impulses resulting from the extension of the muscle. So this is the afferent nerve. It takes the information about the scratch impulses, converts it to signal, and transports it further towards the central nervous system. There are also flower spray neuron endings. Their function is uncertain, but they probably transmit the information about the scratch of the muscle. Now, let me bring our extrafusal muscle fibers back. Now, as I said, when the extrafusal muscle fibers scratch, the intrafusal muscle fibers scratch too, because they are attached to the intramuscular connective tissue. And as they scratch, the higher rate of impulses is coming from primary and secondary nerve endings. Now, let me write all of this down, just not to forget it. This was the extrafusal muscle fiber. This over here is the connective tissue capsule. And then we had two types of intrafusal muscle fibers. One of them was nuclear chain fiber. And another type of them, the type that keeps the nuclei inside of center of the fiber, is called the nuclear back fiber. Then we had the primary animal spiral neuron endings. And we also had the secondary flower spray neuron endings. Now, I want to point out that nuclear back fibers can sense the onset scratch. while the nuclear chain fibers can sense the sustained scratch. But they can both sense the rapid scratch. That is way more important. I will just write it here, point it out. Rapid scratch. Now that is really important for reflexes 
I'll explain it like this. Let's say if this is you and you're holding your hands like this, okay? Somebody drops 40 pounds on your hands. This will cause a rapid scratch of your muscles, okay? And then what happens, we have the scratch here going on in the extrafusal muscle fibers. And because the intrafusal muscle fibers are attached to the intramuscular connective tissue, they also scratch. And what they do, they convert these impulses to the signal, and they send it to the spinal cord. And in the spinal cord, the signal fires the motor neurons that are supposed to make your extrafusal muscle fibers contract. Now let's say that the motor neuron from the spinal cord triggered the contraction of the extrafusal muscle fibers. And now the situation that we have is not the muscle scratching, but does the quite opposite. So if the extrafusal muscle fibers are becoming shorter, the intrafusal muscle fibers would simply become slack. They wouldn't become shorter because they did not contract. And that would cause no more signal going to spinal cord because those nerve endings are stimulated by the scratch impulses. And if the intrafusal muscle fibers are slack, then we have no more signal. To prevent this from happening, what we need is a motor neuron that will innervate the intrafusal muscle fibers. So this motor neuron is supposed to innervate the intrafusal muscle fibers. And when we have the one motor neuron causing the contraction of the extrafusal muscle fibers, we also have one more neuron from the spinal cord at the same time causing the contraction of the intrafusal muscle fibers. And now the intrafusal muscle fibers contract, become shorter, and they will not become slack. So that way when somebody drops 40 pounds on your hands, the muscle spindle takes the information about the rapid scratch, sends it to the spinal cord, and the motor neurons in the spinal cord trigger the contraction of the muscle fibers, and that way you are safe from the injuries, your hands stay in place, and you, and you keep the muscles from hyperextending. Thank you for watching this video. Please check out my website, flashbrainanatomy.com.